So I want to do a few slides on, on introducing a few things and, and just the concept. And, and this is a recap from last week. Uh, but ACE is going to then do a live demo on creating an SPFX image card ACE and displaying an image carousel. But as the attendees on this call might be wondering what is an SPFX and what is an ACE, let's do a quick recap on those things. So ACE is an extensibility model for Microsoft Viva Connection and Microsoft Viva Home. Now, ACEs might actually be supported in the future in other Viva uh, modules as well, but I cannot provide any additional details on that or any timelines. So there's a ongoing possibility of that. ACE means adaptive card extension. Uh, it is a SharePoint framework component and SharePoint framework behind of the scene is basically responsible of making that adaptive card dynamic. So SharePoint framework is the orchestrator hitting the API, getting the API and the information from APIs, and then bypassing that information to adaptive card. And, and that makes it adaptive card extension. So we're using adaptive cards, we're using graph, we're using REST APIs. We do have a new learn module I've made up. Uh, English is hard. We do have a new learn module available uh, at AKMS Viva Ace Learn. Um, and that's basically one hour and one hour and 56 minutes, if I remember correctly, or 52, um, on learning how to get started on creating this. What's cool about this one also uh, is that we are rolling out new features, as mentioned. First of all, SharePoint Framework, you probably might have heard about that one already. It's been available for a while. You can use it to ex build extensibility for numerous different capabilities in Microsoft 365, and the applications are automatically hosted. So it makes it super easy for you to actually implement uh, extensibility, which are then hitting the APIs in, for example, in Microsoft Graph or potentially somewhere else. Now, Starting today, we are rolling out the Microsoft uh, Viva Home experience, which is the one which you can see on the left side. And that's starting to roll out today to targeted release tenants. So not in the normal production tenants, but to those tenants where the targeted release switch has been enabled in the organizational level. And that means that the Viva connection experience is a bit kind of getting adjusted. Um, uh, if you want, there will be settings and configuration options of how to control uh, this experience. The right side is more the traditional Viva Connection experience, which also had the, exactly the same mobile experience, but the desktop experience looks a bit different. But you can see those ACs as in the cards in the background, and you can use those cards also inside of a SharePoint. So you don't have to be inside of a Teams or inside of Viva Connection. Those cards can be used inside of a SharePoint portals as well. But to continue our series on how do we build those ACs, um, uh, ACs, AC is going to, oh, AC is an AC. AC is going to actually show us how to create an SPFX image card, ACE, displaying an image carousel. And let's jump on AC's screen um, to see that one in practice. AC, take it away. Thank you very much. Let me double check. Let's see. All right. So you should be able to see big purple slide. Yes? Yep. I can see that. Take it cool. away. Purple slide, no flickering, so success. Um, all right, so thanks a lot for joining us, uh, joining you for this demo today. This is the second exercise, as Vesa was just referring to, um, this is the second hands-on lab exercise from a Microsoft Learning module that I recently published for Microsoft under Microsoft Learning. Uh, and it's on creating adaptive card extensions with uh, SharePoint Framework. So just real quick bio. Um, who is doing the demo? My name is Andrew Connell. I'm a Microsoft MVP, longtime MVP, I guess, uh, around office development, where I focus just on primarily SharePoint framework, but any kind of like Microsoft 365 development. And you can learn more about me and the stuff that I do from those links that you see there on the slide. Um, but what we want to do is I want to talk a little bit more about this module. So I know Vesta just mentioned a lot of stuff about it, but this module is targeted for people who have no experience working with adaptive card extensions so aces and if you so if you want to learn what these are kind of how they work my target audience for this was designed for someone who has no experience with adaptive card extensions i do have some expectation that you know what the sharepoint framework is um, and you've built a web part of the sharepoint framework but you don't have to be an expert at that the module is consisted of like three sections each section contains about a 10 to 15 minute lecture uh, that includes slides, but also has just, it's all text-based as well. And then it also has a hands-on lab that reinforces what you just learned. Um, it's available as a screen, both as a, uh, a Microsoft Learning Module, all text-based, and then you've also got access to a screencast of the module, of the entire module as well, where you can jump between the different sections and see the demos and the videos. Um, if you want more of the 
I don't know what you are. Ref- I don't know. I saw someone said in the chat, you need more of those in the learn area. I've published like over 35 modules in Microsoft Learn. So I'm not sure what you're looking for, but we've got a lot in there. But at any rate, the the one thing that the video will do is it's going to walk through creating the, the, creating the demo. I'm not going to do a live coding right now because this isn't an exercise in watching Andrew debug and saying that he, he does a bad job of fat fingering stuff. Um, instead, I've already got a sample that's up and running and it's working, but you can do the exact same one that I'm going to do. Um, it's exercise two or the second exercise in the module. So let's get to the business time. There's our demo. Pointy in down, pointy in business side down. All right, so let me show you the one that's actually working. Let me focus on that first. Um, and then we'll look at the code, how it's implemented. So the scenario here, I've already got it running. It's called the ACE Image Viewer. And the scenario that I've got is I wanted to build an adaptive card extension that was using the image format or the image card template to be able to display dynamic images from some external service. And so what I choose to do uh, is to use open uh, non-copyright data. And I thought that the best place to choose that, as everyone would obviously agree, is using one of the open APIs from uh, NASA. Um, And in this case, this is one that has um, catalogs and allows you to look at all the images that have been taken with the various Mars rovers or rovers that are on the planet Mars. So here's the one that we've got right here. Um, This is showing me a default image of Mars because I don't have uh, anything selected yet. Um, I don't have a specific image selected yet or any any detail for it. So what this is, is going to show us an image on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, it gives me a little bit of information to selecting a rover and uh, a soul, which is the equivalent of a day that we have on Earth. Um, a soul is a is is a day on Mars, which is a little bit longer than what we have on Earth. Um, and then this little button here is going to allow us to toggle, but through the different images. So either going forward through the images we, re- we return or going back. So what I'm going to do is I need to be able to get this up and running and get it working. I'm going to have to go put this into edit mode. And I can specify a couple different things here. So the NASA Open API gives us the ability to do Um, has an API key that we can specify. I'm using the demo key, which is giving me a a limit on how many times I can use it in one day based on my IP address. But you can register for free and get your own own key and use it there if you want. I also have a couple different rovers we can choose from. And then I can also go ahead and put the photos in here as well. So let me go ahead and let me just plug in the number of what photos we want to pull or what day we want to pull from. First the page. And there we go. Now we've got our list of the, um, we got our, some images that are coming back. And so now I can start cycling through a couple of these different images, got to switch it over into preview mode so I can see it in display mode. And now I can start viewing all of these different images. So kind of just jumping through and looking at a couple of different pictures. And the cool thing is, is that when, what I've done, also done is that when I select anywhere on the card, it's going to open up a quick view of the current image, give me the ID of the image. And then I'm also using a little fact table to write some additional information about the image. And to show you it's dynamic, I'll pick a different one. There's a different one, that's a widescreen one. Here's another one, a lot more rocks. Um, I don't know if anybody else gets excited about this stuff, but uh, it's pretty cool. There you go, shadow of the, there we go. We got a wheel right there. These rovers are huge. If you've never seen one of these things, they're awesome. While I'm stopping the demo and switching back over to the code so we can look at that, I can tell you I got to go to um, the Jet Propulsion Lab out in California once and get a private tour and got to stand next to a replica. Curiosity, and it's it's big. Those wheels are like they're they're not they're bigger than they're bigger than what I can show on the screen. Anyway, so let's kill the demo here and let's go over to the code. All right, so let's see how do we actually implement this stuff. This is pretty cool. It's pretty simple actually. So the thing with ACEs um, that I like to look at them is that when a lot of people look at ACEs, that a lot of people think that these things are something special and unique, and they're not. They're really just, I, I like to think of them as just a web part, where SharePoint framework extensions feel very different from web parts. ACEs are basically just web parts, right? That's, I think it's, it's a simpler way to understand that. So if we look at the root class for an ACE, let's get rid of that. Let's take a look at what we have here. So in this case, um, it's very similar to a React-based web part. And so what you're going to have is you're going to have a property, uh, public properties for your, for your component, and you're also going to have a state. 
whenever the state changes, it triggers the entire card to, to re-render, okay? Um, you're not gonna see a page refresh or a reflow or anything like that. It's just gonna re-render it and put it back on the screen. The properties, these are the public properties that you can specify on your adaptive card. It works the exact same way as a web part. These are the things that are also persisted. So this is how I'm storing like the, the current day that's selected, the rover that we've selected, and the API key as well. And then the state for my component or for my ACE is going to contain a number, which is the index of the array of the image in the array that we're current we currently have selected and we're currently looking at. And then the rover photos is just going to be an array of all the photos that I get back from um, the extension. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of how I get all the data and all that stuff and talk to the NAS to the NASA Open API service. That's in this file right here called NASA Service.ts. And that's just using a standard request uh, to an open REST endpoint. When you're building an adaptive card, let's go full screen here. So when you're building an adaptive card, you got these things called navigators. And so what a navigator is for the different views, both card views, which is the card you see rendered on the screen, and quick views, which think of those as little pop-ups. You have to register these things ahead of time to tell the ACE rendering engine that this stuff exists. And so what I've done here is I've gone through and I've registered two things, the card view and the quick view, because you saw we only had uh, two different uh, things in the demo that I did. And then the next thing we're going to do is in the on init, I'm going to initialize my state to, to make it seem like we have nothing selected and we have no photos. I'm going to register our two cards with the rendering engine, specifically with the navigators. And then I'm going to come over here and look at the data that I've got selected um, in my on init where I've got uh, checking to see the properties. Do I have an API key set? Do I have a rover selected? Do I have the date selected that I want to pull photos from? And if I do, then I'm going to update the state. One bit of clarification there, I saw somebody put something about quick views or synonymous to modals. I wouldn't say that because modals indicate that you're hijacking the content, they're hijacking the, the focus on the screen. And that's not the case. I can still keep interacting with the screen while the quick view is open. So I would I just say it's more like a it's more like a, a, a additional like context, more like a, a context menu that I would say. So the other thing we have, so that's where I'm just going through and just setting the state for this. Once I grab the data and I update the state, it's going to re-render the entire screen. Um, the only other thing that's really important here that's interesting here is the part where I'm checking to see uh, the uh, um, an event that's going to get raised whenever I modify the property pane that's going to say that whenever a field has changed, then I want to do something. And in this case here, I'm checking to see, did I change the, the rover property or the day property and if the value has actually changed, if new value is greater than old value, and if it is, or different than old value, and if it is, then I'm going to go try and fetch some photos because clearly something's changed and my data set could change. Okay, so the other part that we did here is you see I've got this render card. And what that's telling the SharePoint framework or the, the rendering engine is it's saying this is the card that you should render on the screen when you're putting it on the page. And that's going to be defined here in this card view. Now, I, the reason it figured that out is because when I registered it previously is I gave it an ID, which was defined up here in this constant on line 25. And then I said, just go create an instance of that card view. And where's that card view? Well, that's over here in a file called card view. So this file contains a couple different accessor methods that we can that we can do some stuff with. All right. So first of all, when someone selects one of the buttons, clicks one of the buttons on my card, that's a submit action. And so I want to be able to do something. And you saw that when I was clicking the buttons going back and forth, I was cycling through the array of all the photos that I got back from Mars. And so in this case here, I'm checking to see, was it a submit action? No, it wasn't. Then get out of here. Otherwise, go grab the current index that we're on and simply go change the current index on the state value equal to the current index and then plus, and you'll see how I'm just using a, a, a positive one or a negative one as the ID to indicate if I want to go forward or backward. I don't have to do a check to see if I'm, you know, doing clicking a next button or a previous button. The other thing that I'm doing too is I had to I am in uh, uh, overriding the accessor method on card selected, and so that says whenever someone clicks the actual card view, what should it do? Well, I want to launch a quick view. Which one? This one. We'll look at that in just a second. So how do I get the data applied to our card view? The way I do that is I'm checking to see, do I have a rover and a day selected? If I do, or if I do not, in this case here, I've got the exclamation point in front of them. If either one of those are empty, then I'm gonna return back some default data using the image of uh, Mars that we have from Wikipedia. 
as a placeholder. You saw that when I first started the demo um, with some text here. This is pretty cool too, because under the uh, older versions of an ACE, we didn't have the ability to set the alt text for um, screen readers. Now we do, so I'm using that here. Now, the next thing I'm doing here is under the else statement, I clearly have a rover and a Mars so rover selected. So I'm gonna change the rover name to just capitalizing the first letter of the rover's name. So capital C for curiosity, and then putting the rest of it there. The image we're gonna use is going to be, look at the image from our rover photos from our state property and grabbing it, grabbing the one out for the index that's currently selected. And then I'm gonna return back an object of four properties, my primary text, my image URL, my image alt text, and the title. Those are four properties that are expected on a card view for an image card. Finally, I'm also gonna define the buttons here, and all this logic does, as you see, is I'm just adding in either a button if I'm at the, um, if I only wanna return one button back, like if I'm at the very beginning of my array, or the beginning of my collection, or the end of the collection, I've got all this stuff, all these conditions kind of defined. The key thing here to notice here is that you remember how I had the buttons had those little like greater than or less than symbols. Notice I'm setting the ID equal to negative one or one. That's how I'm go cycling through my array. Okay, so now let's go back and let's take a look at the quick view. So what happens when I click the actual quick view? Let's see what happens when I click on the card view that launches the quick view to see the details of the image that I selected. All right, got it out. So first of all, JSON, there we go. So what is that? That's our adaptive card. You use, J you use the adaptive card schema, which is all done in, in JSON to define how you want your card to be rendered. And in this case here, I'm using the native capability we have from the adaptive card templating, which has nothing to do with adaptive card extensions. This is part of, of adaptive cards. I'm using its native templating capability that we have to and using their syntax where I'm doing the very, it's a very similar to how like um, uh, template literals work with JavaScript and TypeScript, where I'm using a dollar sign surrounded by the mustache brackets and then putting the name of the property that of the object that's being bound to my card. So remember in my data method on my, in my, in either my quick view or my card view, I'm returning back an object that's got four, has got a bunch of properties assigned to it. In this case here, I have a property named image source. Um, same thing here, I'm writing out the, the, um, the title uh, the, or the byline that I want coming right underneath the, the image. And then I've got this thing, or then there's a text block, some details about the actual photo, and then I'm posting out a fact set, which is a, a rendering element that we have in adaptive cards. Um, and I'm just writing out all that stuff. So that's the template that we're gonna use. If I come over and look at the actual quick view class, when this gets activated, this is what's going to tell the rendering engine where's the JSON for the adaptive card that defines the rendering for this card. And that's the JSON we were just looking at. And then what photo should we show? Well, let's go grab the photo out of our state array to go render that out. So that's pretty cool how, the way that that works. It's pretty easy to go through and to pop that data out. Um, one of the things too, that since I've got another minute or so here that I wanna just, I wanna uh, show you, one thing that's kind of nice about this, and it's different than what we would see with web parts, with respect to the SharePoint framework, but it's uh, it, it, it's different, but it's, you would argue it'd be nice if we had this in, in, in SharePoint framework web parts. ACEs were built from the ground up to be a, in a mobile first experience. And so the idea is that, you know, performance is fast. You're gonna have a lot of these cards like on the screen. So in this case here, traditionally we have this get property pane configuration in a web part where it's gonna return back the actual property pane. But if you're familiar with web parts, you know that you usually define it inside this method. With adaptive card extensions, it's a little different. What that's gonna end up doing is that's going to instead go render out or go uh, load up our property pane that's defined in a separate class or a separate file. Now, why does it do that? Because we have this other method here called load property pane resources. And what this does is it's using this native capability we have in Webpack. Nothing to do with SharePoint framework, nothing to do with Microsoft. This is a native Webpack capability where if you comment, if you put a comment right before something that you're gonna load, then Webpack will split that out into a separate bundle and will only go load that JavaScript bundle when it's when it needs it. So it's not gonna, so in other words, the way that this is set up now is that my adaptive card is never going to, 
in my bundle, the user. So let's say that I'm the let's say I'm the editor of the page, but all of you are consumers um, of the page, either on your mobile device or on the uh, Viva Connections um, app on your desktop. Whenever you guys go load the the page where this adaptive card is going to be rendered out, your your payload that you download is not going to include anything about the property pane because you don't have the ability, your users, you're not, you don't have the ability to put the page into edit mode. So there's no need for you to go through and to add, to download all that extra code. In our case, it's not much code, so it's not really that big of a deal, but you get the point. But for me, when I put the page into edit mode and I say, show me the property pane, that's when I'm going to see this extra bundle get downloaded on, my, on demand because now I my browser experience needs it to be able to get the property pane to do those edits. So that's, I mean, that's pretty cool. We get this natively inside of adaptive card extensions. It doesn't exist for web parts. You could implement something like this yourself um, if you wanted to do this, but I don't expect that we'll, we'll see that with SharePoint framework web parts anytime soon, um, just because it's a, it's a real big change to how you build web parts. And it just doesn't make sense to kind of make that change on the uh, now that we've already got the, the horses have already left the barn. All of Chris Kent's horses have left the barn. So with that being said, that's everything that I wanted to end up showing here with this with this demo. I have another one that we'll do next week that build that makes that's a much more complicated um, ACE uh, that's going to show you how to use the geolocation capabilities that we have in Viva Connections, both showing location and getting a location and, and picking and showing the location from it as well. So we'll see that next week. It's a much bigger sample too, much bigger. So hopefully I have more time. <laughs> yeah, we should be, we have two demos for next week uh, intentionally. Uh, so we're not going to have a third one. So that will mean that we'll have the 20, 25 minutes uh, for that one as well. But excellent. Thank you, ASD, on that one. Mm -hmm.